us to, to Andrea to start the seminar. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you, Maria. So I'm very glad to be here today <coughs> presenting the first experimental evidence for Vx uh, decaying into a new pair. <coughs> um, let me start with uh, a brief introduction. Uh, so both CMS and Atlas collaboration in, um, announced the observation of a new particle uh, in, uh, in July 2012, and um, when uh, in the search for the uh, for the Higgs boson. So the this the the Higgs boson is the was the, the missing piece piece that we had on the standard model that we have a summary on the of the elementary particle of the standard model on the table on the on the right. And uh, the, um, at the beginning, I mean, with the run one and with the run two data set, we were able to establish um, the uh, several properties of the X boson in, uh, in the couplings to the, the force carriers, where DK in the Z and gamma gamma drove the, the evidence of the, of the um, of, of the presence of the X boson, and uh, joined with the first, uh, with the earlier data from uh, from run two, we were able to establish the the couplings of the uh, X boson to the top quark, the bottom quark, and the tau leptons. Now, if we go look at the picture that we have on the on the top uh, right, we see that the basically we, we in the fermionic sector, we we establish that the prop the couplings to the third of fermion generation, both in the quarks and in the in the leptons. So now we can ask ourselves what it's uh, it's coming next. In the the X boson has a peculiar scheme of uh, of couplings that uh, depends um, on the mass of the uh, particle it, uh, it couples to. So as you can see from the diagram on the bottom right, the more massive particles like the, the B quarks get the most of the sharing of a branching fraction. And therefore they, they are the, the easiest to, to assess. But it's important to understand that we scaling across the generation, it's uh, as, it, as predicted by the standard model. If we look at the table, the, the the next generation the the, the two most interesting uh, couplings uh, that we can try to probe with the current detectors are the muon couplings and the charm coupling. The muon it's the most accessible uh, second form in generation despite its very tiny branching fraction. Uh, because it has a very clean signature inside the detector, this, despite the, um, the small background that I will describe later. Unfortunately, we will not be able to, um, to test the coupling to the firm, first fermion generation if the X boson is standard model, because the, the, the next coupling will be on the electrons, which is um, 40,000 times smaller than the X to the mu. Just to give you an example, we can expect to produce roughly one X boson decaying to electron in the full high luminosity uh, LHC pro program. Looking at uh, smaller and smaller couplings, it's giving us inside of the presence of deviations uh, between the predictions and the actual data that can give us inside of uh, new physics, of the presence of new physics. This can also be probed <coughs> to uh, the loops decays because the, the decaying into a loop may have particle running inside the loop of uh, higher masses, higher than the, larger than the X boson one. And this will give, will allow us to probe their, presence by looking at uh, small deviations in the in the cup in the expected couplings and how did we do the, all of this i mean this uh, was done using the cms detector here on uh, on this slide you can see a 
פיק, פיק שור, real picture of CMS detector open, and uh, hopefully in uh, better times you will be able to, to come at CERN and uh, see it uh, again. But let me go to a more schematic uh, picture that descri to, to describe what is important for uh, the h -mimesis. I'm going to focus only on some of the elements in, uh, in this picture. The CMS detector has these uh, cylindrical uh, shapes built uh, around the uh, uh, interaction point. And the, uh, we have the, 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 the inner part, it's, it's uh, composed by the silicon trackers, where we have the pixel vertex and the microstrips. And uh, this is embedded into the magnetic field of uh, roughly four Tesla generated by the superconducting solenoid. This pair gives us an excellent mu resolution that it's uh, crucial in order to identify and, uh, the, uh, and isolate the uh, X to mu mu signal. The external part of the CMS detector is composed by the muon chambers that uh, will allow us, that allow us to clearly identify the, the muon because emitting the muon chambers, it's a strong uh, um, indication of the presence of the muons and allow us also to uh, trigger very efficiently on this kind of events. So, <clears throat> always being in the introduction, let me also talk about the competitive process, processes that the standard model produce. We need, and for us, our uh, background events. In first of all, the, the number of events that we will see in, um, in our analysis, it's, uh, uh, it's given by the, by the, by the uh, theoretical, uh, um, the theoretical inputs that uh, characterize the process, which is the cross section and uh, the branching fraction, these uh, signals B. And usually, it, this is uh, what we quote because uh, it's giving us uh, um, the measurements that we, we want, gives us the intensity, how likely it is to produce uh, this kind of events. And uh, this number, it's also uh, will, will be multiplied by the luminosity, which, is, uh, uh, which corresponds to how many interaction we, uh, the LH machine is delivering to the, to, to the CMS experiments, and to geometrical uh, uh, factors like the, the acceptance, so how many times the objects are inside the detector, and the efficiency that we have to uh, reconstruct on to trigger on these events. The dominant, I mean, the, the X to mu mu signal, it's the small um, part that you see on the um, bottom uh, right of this plot. And the two um, most, the two competitive uh, process that we, we have are the brilliant production, where we produce a, a, Z, a massive Z boson decaying into a pair of uh, two muons and a pair production, where each tops decays into a B and a W, and the W decaying, decays into a muon and a neutrino. As you can easily see, the difference is uh, several order of magnitudes uh, between the mu mu production and the um, uh, Drellian production. And this is something that will uh, pose one of the challenges of, the, of this analysis in order to control the um, background estimation and to be able to assess the presence of the signal. Let me now try to explain a little more, I mean, going into the, the analysis detail and to explain uh, the different steps that we have. So even when we uh, will reduce around a mass window, we will still have a um, a signal over background which is uh, very small. The background is at least two order of magnitudes larger. 
And this needs to, will tell us that we need to have a very precise uh, understanding of the usage of the neural momentum resolution to extract the signal. And <clears throat> we need to be able to use all the available information in order to corner down part of the phase space where the signal uh, and background can be, where the signal background ratio can be enhanced. The final state is uh, typically depicted in this um, picture, where you can see that the, the, our final state is characterized by two muons. So our baseline selection is essentially asking for two muons, where uh, at least one of them pass the trigger requirements. And we furthermore require that they are in the tracker uh, cover region, where we can identify the muons and measure their momentum very well. Furthermore, we also uh, apply some corrections to the muon momentum in order to recover uh, moment momentum loss given by the photon final state uh, radiation, or and to finally adjust the um, the calibration of the muon moment with a, a Z-peak calibration and with a constraint to the beam spot in order to gain uh, as much as possible on the dynamic invariant mass. And the two dominant backgrounds are the one that I mentioned before, are the brilliant where, they, uh, where we have two prompt muons in the final states and very large cross section. And the, the Drelian is also uh, mediated by the massive uh, Z vector boson. So the kinematics is uh, still going to, to be very similar. And therefore, we will need to fight harder in order to reduce it. And the second one is the TT bar um, production, where we have more handle uh, to, to reduce this background, like the presence of the bijets or the associated hadronic activity. <clears throat> then what we want also do, to do is to um, divide the phase space as much as in order to do this part, we first, as a first step, try to target each uh, production mode that the Higgs boson is uh, decaying into. And these are the vector boson fusion, uh, where we have uh, two incoming quark that uh, produce a vector boson mediated to a Z or a W. We have the gluon fusion, which is a dominant production mode, where two gluons uh, produce uh, a loop, a, an X boson through a loop of uh, mainly top quarks. And uh, uh, we have also the associate productions with VH, with VH, where the, we have an additional Z or a W boson, and with two uh, top quark pairs. After we have divided these, uh, these tags, and uh, these um, major tags, further announce the uh, sensitivity inside of each tag through multivariate discriminators. And these will form several categories inside each tag. And we also have a signal extraction uh, that is uh, dedicated per tag in order to uh, maximize the sensitivity of the analysis. For the vector boson fusion production, we have a background Monte Carlo prediction the, 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 that is derived from the Monte Carlo simulation. While for the other tags, the gluon fusion, the uh, VH production, and the top quark pair production, we have we use uh, analytical functional forms in the invariant in the dimuon invariant mass in order to describe the background and each of them is targeting uh, each of the subcategories in order to uh, model all the shapes uh, dependencies inherited by the different background compositions so let me go now inside of the uh, specific tags so the uh, ggh uh, the gluon fusion categories are made by, I mean, the first to select them, we want them to be orthogonal. So we will uh, veto all the events that will go in DBF, in VH and in TTH. 
And practically this means that the, we need to require that either we don't have a jet pair that uh, satisfies the VBF selection, so the, with invariant mass less than, less than 400 GV or pseudo rapidity separation less than 2.5. We don't need to have the presence of additional uh, leptons, and we do not need to have the presence of um, B tagged uh, jets. The final stage that we are targeting, it's pretty simple. We have two, mu two outcoming muons uh, opposite in charge, and we have some recoil activities in the event. So what we do, we train a boosted decision tree uh, where we use the information from the muon pair kinematics, the associated jet kinematics. We use the angular correlations between the muon and the jets. It is designed in order to be uncorrelated with the dimuon invariant mass. And uh, we far furthermore, we also uh, use the uh, dimuon uh, invariant mass resolution estimated event by events in order to, um, with a waiting procedure in the training, in order to uh, enhance the uh, part of the phase space where the, uh, where the signal has a, a good uh, dimuon mass resolution and push it to high BDT score. What you can see on the bottom uh, right it's um, the, the, um, the shape of the discriminator that we are fitting, and you see that there are four, uh, five categories uh, corresponding to the lines. The dominant background here is the Drelian uh, production, and uh, uh, the highest part of the, the most sensitive categories, category five, here, it's, you see that uh, tries to um, recall, uh, recover the residual part of the vector boson fusion production, which, has, uh, which, is, which can be in, identified more easily due to the difference in the uh, final state. The, the signal extraction in uh, gluon fusion, it's, uh, as I was mentioning, it's performed with uh, analytical function. So we need to construct a model, a signal mo a model for both the signal and the background. For the signal, we use a double-sided uh, crystal ball function, which is a function with the Gaussian core and uh, polynomials on the tails that can allow us to uh, model pretty well the, um, the tails of the muon mass resolution. As you can see, the, the muon resolution uh, it's typically very good for uh, its muons of order of 1%. This gives us um, a, um, a full half uh, in, in half width at uh, half maximum of around 1.6 GV in um, averaging between all the categories. The trigger efficiency is also a, another key point in this analysis because we want to retain all the data that uh, the LHC is delivering and CMS is recording. The trigger efficiency per leg, it's uh, about 90%. And when we put uh, both the fact that we have uh, two muons in the vents, we can be, uh, we are pretty close to a full efficiency for uh, uh, signal um, events. The background estimation uh, is uh, more complicated because we need to be able to control uh, the, um, the background estimates to, uh, few, uh, to a percent level. So the design for the, um, for the GGH, it's, uh, it's using a core PDF method. So the, you know, and this design has been deployed in order to minimize uh, possible mismodel choices due to the uh, choice of the uh, analytical form. So we have a core part, uh, which is common for all the um, GGH categories, that it's uh, based on um, 
our expectation from Drelian. So the, it's a bright Wigner inspired functional form mainly. And here we actually have several uh, functional forms that are discrete profile during the uh, uh, fit to the data. Each of these, uh, um, when we look in each uh, category, we have a, tran a polynomial transfer factor that multiplies this uh, core part and adapt the, um, the shape to each single uh, category. And what we look in the data is something uh, will try to follow the uh, small difference from the core inside each category. <clears throat> Let me go now to the vector boson fusion production. So the VBF production has two uh, tagging jets, back forward and backward, which are uh, not uh, color connected. So the, the, the presence of these two jets uh, with uh, a large invariant mass of uh, 400 GV and the pseudo rapidity separation of at least 2.5, it's uh, the uh, basic selection entering in, in this point. Um, we uh, furthermore explore the properties of the kinematics of this uh, um, final state, uh, training a deep neural network, targeting explicitly the VBF production. Since we here we are fitting on the uh, background on the on the Monte Carlo uh, template, we use also the the Daimon invariant mass as part of the training, and we also include uh, the muon pair kinematics, the jet pair kinematics, but but as well also the the absence of uh, um, adronic activity in the event, which is done with. Uh, the soft jet activity uh, variables. The dominant background for this uh, production are the electroweak Drelian production, which is uh, essentially the similar um, um, diagram where we have a C boson instead of an X boson. And we also have a real part Drelian and TT bar uh, production. And this can be seen in the, in the in the, disc, in the invariant mass plots and in the discriminator plots that we are, uh, that I'm showing on this slide. <clears throat> the, as I was uh, saying, the, um, the, the BBF uh, categories, I mean, are targeting the, the VBF production. And we, we can see that in the last bin of, bins of the VBF discriminator, um, we have a very, uh, announcements of a vector boson fusion production with a very small contamination from the gluon fusion, while we have a residual part of uh, uh, gluon fusion in the lower uh, beams of the discriminator. The fit part is designed to use both the uh, six region and the side bands regions in the invariant mass where the um, signal region is between 115 and 135 GV, and the sidebands includes uh, all other events uh, from 110 to 150 GV. The fit is done actually by here, and we depict uh, the, the sum of all of them for uh, displaying purposes. The, in a, the, another tag that we have uh, deployed is the TT, are the TTH categories. So the TTH, it's, uh, it's, you can see the diagram, it's pretty different from uh, the ones before because we are producing the X in association with two top quarks. The, tops, the top quarks uh, all, almost always decays into a W and a, a B boson. And here we have two scenarios where both W is decaying uh, um, adronically. So we have a W adronic uh, tags. And one of the two, I mean, at least one of the two Ws decays uh, to a lepton and neutrino. For lepton and neutrinos, we, we usually tag the uh, electron and muons, but we also include the, uh, the, 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 the decays from uh, 
the leptonic decays of a town of Rima. So what we do, what we did, so the basic uh, part of the selection of the phase space here, it's the presence of the two muons as we had before. And we asked either the presence of uh, one uh, medium B-tag jet or two loose B-tag jets. The, uh, the signal in each of these uh, two possibilities is uh, uh, again announced in uh, categories uh, with uh, the training of a multivariate discriminator. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a boosted decision tree where the, we use the kinematic and the topological information of the uh, present in the event. For what concerns the hadronic part, we also uh, deployed an hadronic top tagger in order to identify uh, the hadronic top decays and to announce the, um, in this way the signal over background contribution. The, also, these uh, BTs are designed in order to be uncorrelated with the invariant mass, uh, with the Daimon invariant mass, so that when we uh, perform a categorization on these uh, discriminators, we will not uh, shape, um, we will not induce uh, turnons or shaping of the invariant mass, of the immunium invariant mass. <coughs> As you can see, the uh, dominant uh, um, background for the adronic part, adronic uh, categories, top TTH categories, uh, we see the discriminator on the top, uh, on the on the top right of the of the slide. It's uh, mainly uh, due to the residual uh, TT bar events, where uh, both the two tops decays uh, leptonically into the muons that we are tagging, uh, but we have additional activity that we miss tag as uh, adronic top um, jets. For what concern the um, leptonic categories, we see the discriminator on the bottom right of the, of the slide. Here, the dominant background is the TTZ production, where, the, as before, we just uh, replace in the final state uh, the X boson with a, with a Z boson. Uh, the TTZ, you see, it's pretty pure. We have a very good, um, so the, the TTH leptonic categories are pretty good. We have uh, a very good uh, um, signal over background, uh, and we have uh, that the, most of the signal going into these categories is actually from uh, TTH or TH production. The TTH uh, adronic part, it's also true uh, that most of this signal is uh, from TTH, where we have a residual contribution from uh, mainly gluon fusion uh, in the lower uh, category score, where we mistag one of the, one, where we mistag the final state jets in, um, into B. The, sh the signal extraction is uh, a little bit simpler than um, um, gluon fusion because we have uh, uh, that the, the categories are purer and the, um, the signal over background is uh, larger. So we have an analytical model for the for signal and background. Here we use for the signal, again, a double-sided crystal ball that uh, describe pretty well the signal shape. And for the background, we use uh, a, an exponential and the polynomial functions. And finally, the last tag is uh, VH categories. Here we are producing the, um, um, the, uh, the X boson in association with a Z where we expect uh, two extra leptons, E or mu, electron or, or muons, and uh, or a W, where we expect that the W goes into a, a, a electron, uh, an electron or a muon, and a neutrino. Again, we, we train um, two separate BDTs, one for the ZH production, where we use the, the extra information that we have in the events, and we, um, um, are aiming to have it uncorrelated with the mu mu um, category. And you can see the discriminator on the top right of the, of the corner uh, where you, you have that the dominant background is the, uh, the continuum ZZ uh, production. 
and for the for the VH, we do the same. We train VDT. We have here three uh, categories, and uh, here the dominant um, background is the dye boson production in WZ or in uh, ZZ. These categories, I mean, due to the presence of the extra leptons, tag pretty well the events. So the the events are pretty pure and uh, targeting either ZH or um, WH, but they also uh, suffer from the heels, expected heels that we have in uh, this kind of uh, associated, associated production. For the signal extraction, we use uh, um, a double-sided crystal ball for the signal, uh, and we use a bright Wigner inspired function in order to model the uh, the background uh, shapes. Let, let me spend a brief word on the systematic uncertainties. So the analysis at the moment is still statistical dominated. The dominant statistical, uh, the dominant uh, uncertainties is due to the uh, statistics in the background estimation and in the presence of signal. <coughs> while uh, the dominant uncertainties are um, affecting more, more the, uh, the, the background prediction in the VBF template, in the boson fusion templates. And uh, we have uh, that the, for when we measure the, the cross section, so we have the, an impact from the theoretical uncertainties on the gluon fusion uh, modeling. So let me now go to the results. So we need to put everything all together. So as I was mentioning, we can see here the, uh, the uh, purity of the signal with respect to the background in each of these uh, tags and categories inside the tags. The gluon fusion categories are the one that have the smallest uh, signal over background of a few percent uh, when we integrated it in, uh, uh, in the full width up maximum. While, and, the, and you can see that the categorization is increasing this uh, uh, signal over background composition. The VBF, it's a pretty pure uh, signal over background composition, especially in the last pins. Uh, but we will have uh, limited uh, number of events to fit, so this is uh, the limiting part for the, for the VBF, and it's also giving the, the fact that it's statistic, the, that this part of analysis is statistically dominated. And uh, the associated tag in, uh, with a vector boson or uh, with a top pair, so uh, enhancing the have a very good uh, signal over background composition between 10 and uh, 20 percent, enhancing the, um, the signal. The, the fit, uh, what we do to extract the, the, the final signal is a simultaneous fit in all these categories, and uh, we incorporate all the noise parameters as uh, all the uncertainties as a nuisance parameters inside the fit. And finally, when we look at the, at the data, we can see that we have uh, an, an evidence for um, the uh, X boson production to a pair of muons. So we have a 3.0 sigma observed, while 0.5 sigma were expected at the best mass that CMS has measured for the X boson, which is 125.38 GB. What does it mean so that we have uh, three sigma observed? It means that uh, the, the, the chances that uh, the, the background will, give, will rise to a similar fluctuations in, uh, in data is uh, um, <clears throat> at or to, to a larger fluctuations. It's uh, one, it's of the order of one every 700 uh, times. So let's try to uh, look more inside this uh, probability volume. So what we can see from uh, in, uh, in these plots are the observed uh, the p value on the left. And we see that they, there are the different uh, fluctuations in the different categories, in the different tags that sums up to the overall, uh, overall observed significance. 
and the expected uh, sensitivity for a standard model X boson, where we can see that the VBF category is the one that is uh, most sensitive, followed by the um, gluon fusion uh, categories. And uh, we, we add that TTH and VA and the VH categories are following, helping up to consolidate the result. Now, when we, we see it, we want to compare now, we have compared it now to with the background predictions. Uh, so with the absence of the X boson to mu, now we want to compare it to the, stand, the standard model expectations. In order to do so, we use usually uh, um, what we call the strength modifiers. So we have the, the, the mu, which are the sigma, uh, times branching ratio observed divi divided by the expectations from the standard model. And we when we compare uh, the, the productions, we have that on the, um, on the plots on the right, we have that the combined um, uh, best fit uh, signal strength, it's of the order of 1.2, so we are 20% higher than the standard model expectations, but we are uh, well compatible with the, with the standard model expectations. So we are within, uh, as you can see on the plot, we are within one sigma uh, for, from the standard model. And as before, the two categories that uh, dominate the, the production are VBF and GGH, which as you see is slightly more and slightly less than the standard model expected. While we have a small excess of around of about yet one sigma in uh, TTH and uh, VH categories. If we now to look uh, at the production mode on a different angle, we have uh, on the bottom uh, left the plot where we scale differently the production mode that are um, tied to a vector boson production and the production mode that are actually tied uh, to a fermionic production. So the plot on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, show this to the to this scan, and you can see that we are the we are uh, the, the the observation is very well uh, in compatible with the standard model expectation. <clears throat> Furthermore, we now go to the character the more more in depth into the characterization of the properties of this uh, decay. So we want to measure the couplings. So we want to remove all the assumptions that we have so far on the stadal model production or the decay. And in order to do so, we use all the other X measurements that CMS has performed. That the, uh, from a theoretical uh, point of view, the uh, cross section it's uh, going to the, it's uh, going it's the it's uh, related to the square of the matrix element. And we also know that uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, with some uh, uh, realistic assumption, we, um, we, have, uh, uh, we can uh, factorize the production and the decay. So by doing so, uh, we can use a consistent perturbation of the standard model that is uh, the, uh, the so-called Kappa framework. So each of the of the vertex of the interaction with the X boson, we can look at uh, which particles uh, are present and uh, scale the expectations uh, that the, the observation with a different uh, coupling. And uh, so the, here we have the production mode. So the GGH production, it's going through a loop and this loop is dominated by the top quark and the bottom quark. Then we have the vector boson and the VH productions that are tied to uh, the, the vector boson, while the TTH associate production is uh, sensitive to the couplings of the X boson to the top uh, quarks. We can now look also at the decay, and here we can look at all the decays that CMS is uh, currently analyzing. The, the, the one that I present is X to mu, and it's uh, sensitive only to, these, to the couplings of the X to muons, which is uh, the, um, pretty what we are trying to, to target. 
and we have that uh, all the other decays are sensitive to the to the couplings uh, where we have gamma gamma that uh, it's also going through a loop that is uh, where the in the loop runs the top and the w bosons and therefore these uh, the, the we have sensitivities to the to the kappa w in, in kappa top if we now put everything together, we have this, uh, and we put all the measurements as were presented before in, uh, in this paper, we just substitute the, 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 the x to the new measurement with a new one, and we have here a constraint on the strength of, the, of kappa mu, so the, the, the modifier of the, of the coupling with respect to the standard model, which is op which is constant with uh, with the standard model with uh, with the precision of twenty percent. So, in summary, what I presented today, it's a sophisticated analysis that is searching for the X decaying into uh, a dimension pair, and all the production modes have been considered in order to maximize the uh, sensitivity of the analysis. What we found was the evidence of the X boson um, decaying into a pair of muons, and this is the first characterization of the couplings of the muons to the, of the X boson to the second fermion generation. And all the strands that we are measuring at the moment and uh, all the couplings are in agreement with the prediction from the standard model. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea, for a very clear uh, and very, really very clear discussion uh, of the analysis. Uh, well, let's start with the question. So, uh, as usual, just please raise your uh, your hand, and and we can we can go. Okay. So maybe while people think, let me ask you one. Uh, very general one just to, to get people started. Uh, from your point of view, I mean, this is a fantastic achievement, no? It's, uh, it's, it's been really great. So can you tell us, uh, from your point of view, what is next? Yes, so from my point of view, what uh, we want to, if we look uh, also at the summary, what we want to, to do next, I mean, we have found the evidence, which is uh, an indication, of course, we need to uh, bring in the years to come to this uh, evidence to an observation. So uh, shifting it from uh, three sigma to five sigmas. And uh, this will require a consistent effort in the upcoming year. If we look uh, again uh, in broadly in the X sector, what we need to do, uh, not tied to this analysis, it's the couplings in the in the quarks sector for the second fermion generation. And this is given by the, uh, the X to charm and the, the couplings to, uh, to small decays like the Z gamma decays where we need to test the presence of uh, additional par particle in the loop. And this give, needs to give us a full uh, and consistent picture of the the X boson and the and its properties. Okay, so there is quite a lot ahead. So thank you, Andrea. Begonia. Uh, yes, uh, hello, Andrea. This is Begonia. Thank you very much for this very clear seminar. Uh, I have two questions. One is uh, uh, more or less in the in the same line Maria was asking. So, what are the perspectives for for run three regarding the this uh, Higgs to mu mu uh, measurement? Uh, where where do you see you can have apart from statistics, of course, that you can still uh, have. Uh, an improvement in, in the sensitivity or to, to, to reach to this observation? So the, the analysis at the moment, it's, uh, it's pretty complex and we, we quite explore many things that we, can, uh, we could explore. What we can try to look at uh, are, for instance, the uh, possibility to use uh, 
Monte Carlo predictions also in, uh, in the other, in TTH and VH tags. And this can give us uh, um, a, a, a boost in the sensitivity of these categories. And for what concern run three, I mean, uh, I mean we need to, um, to look at the amount of data that we will uh, receive in particular. And it's, uh, it will be uh, very tight to reach five sigma with only run three, because we will uh, essentially double our sensitivity. And uh, this means that at the end of run three, we can be um, around four sigma um, of um, observed. Uh, and um, th this depends also on the on the fluctuation that we will see on data. But uh, more or less, uh, I mean, what uh, what I'm saying is uh, we have some handles to to explore in this analysis, and uh, we should. And uh, it's not uh, going to be also easy to uh, replicate all the work that has been done because the the effort was uh, really huge. Uh, yes, I can imagine, <laughs> sure. Uh, just one short question uh, as a follow-up. Uh, regarding TH, I think it was in the slide 15 or so that you were mentioning you only consider a hadronic decays uh, of the talk or uh, just one of them, uh, one of the quark tops, uh, top quarks decaying leptonically. Uh, why not including both leptonic, uh, I mean, both of them decaying leptonically? We actually consider the double leptonic decay, but uh, this is uh, included in the leptonic categories. And the reason is that the double, uh, the TTH, where both tops are uh, leptonic, it's, uh, it's very pure. So the signal over background, it's, uh, it's very high. But uh, as you can see, the, uh, the expected yields are very low. So we would have uh, order of 0.1 expected events or less, which means that this, uh, uh, separating these events, it's not... Uh, uh, bringing sensitivity to the overall analysis. So for this reason, we choose to incorporate them in the, in this, uh, not to distinguish the number of leptonic decays of the top. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Verona. Thank you, Andrea. Pablo? Uh, hi, thank you, Andrea. Very nice talk and very, very nice results. Long expected to see some new in, in CMS and, and Atlas. Uh, I mean, I, I attended also the, the, the seminar at CERN, and, and the situation maybe is more, let's say, I would say as, as usual, is more serious, <coughs> more robust in CMS than in Atlas. I, I saw some, not flaws in the analysis, but some weaknesses. Uh, I still have some questions for, for your analysis, in particular the background model. Uh, in, in, in slide 16, for example, I mean, this is just to be a bit picky, okay? But in slide 16 in the mass distribution, when I look at the dots below 125, there are, I mean, visually at least, uh, more or less in average, uh, on the line a little a bit above. But then on the right of the above uh, 125, they are, I mean, I would say visually below the line. And then again, in the pH category, uh, in the slide 18, uh, essentially all the dots, but the few at the end, uh, between 130 and 145 below the line. So I would say that maybe the background model or the representation of the background is not fully under control. I, 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 I have a hard time to believe that the systematic uncertainty you quote in the shape of the, of the background model uh, is underestimated. Also the fact that, I mean, pu putting all the channels together and, and praying for effects compensating each other so you fit. I mean, this has been done in, in, in CMS and Atlas for ages and I was right, okay? I was always criticized about uh, uh, this this habit because I don't think the, the systematic uncertainties are accounted for, uh, let's say, in, in, in the right way, okay? So of course, in the combined graph uh, with the weights, uh, these uh, effects are not visible, but they are there 
And I think there is a systematic effect here, at least in these two channels, in VH and in TTH. Then you go to the, to the slide. slide 23, a final combination, and, and of course you see the, this so different uh, measurements on, on the mass, but then, uh, I mean, there is no trouble in, in, in combining them, even though in, in two different channels, the, the obtained mass are, are so different, okay? Uh, I, I mean, I, I know I, I, I'm not letting you answer because this is not a question, this is just a comment, okay? So le I, I will just finish saying that uh, I think this three sigma is a bit, you know, a PR kind of result, uh, a bit opportunistic. Uh, I said this more dramatic for, for Atlas, but you know, you have this, uh, this local p-value, which essentially is a chi-square versus the mass of the Higgs with this funny shape. Uh, I would expect for a serious statistician to make a fit to the shape, to the, to the black line, uh, maybe a parabolic or whatever, and, and in order to get the, the minimum value, uh, so you have a more, let's say, credible uh, function of the local p-value versus mh, and then quote uh, the mean value for the mass and the significance, which uh, is not three sigma, it's maybe 2.7, it got three sigma by chance. And as you know, uh, taking into account the, you have so many different systematic uncertainties, not fully under, some of them are not, uh, you know, you, you have the capability of some uh, fine tuning. This three sigma is not really something uh, you can believe. I don't think it's relevant because the, the, the events are there and the result is very nice. Uh, I, I insist that I congratulate the experiment for the results, but you know, this kind of thing uh, looks kind of a bit press release and uh, this is becoming a habit in this kind of results. Thank you. Let me, let me also reply in this. Uh, so I'll try to go through your comments and tell you why it's uh, sometimes it's not the case and I hope I didn't forget anything. First of all, I mean, these are, I mean, it's true that you see some tendency in this kind of slow, slow, um, low uh, yield categories and um, these kind of plots i mean are actually as i was saying a pr because uh, they, they they actually include uh, i mean this plot includes uh, the sum over nine categories and uh, unfortunately when you have i mean you see when you have very small hills most of the times you will have no no events in any position so in order to assess the uh, the good the goodness of one fit you need to go in looking inside each of subcategories. And if you do, you will see that as we, we did, we perform a goodness of fit test using saturated uh, likelihood in each of the categories and in combination of them in order to assess the correct mod that the model is correctly describing the data. So these funny shapes that you see are actually used for visualization because uh, I mean, if I start to present uh, 10 plots, I mean, five plots in these slides and five plots in these slides, you will actually uh, not be able to, to follow very much. The plots have been uh, made available online. online. Then I remember correctly that you, you mentioned about the, the results. So the results, I mean, this is derived with a full light scan. As you perfectly know, the likelihood is the best model that we have. So when we establish the likelihood function, we use this function with, uh, with the procedure to actually determine the p-value, which is the best thing that we can do from a statistical point of view. And this is also very well um, established to have good property, good coverage properties and predict correctly the background. What we wanted to do was to put the results at the only nominal mass, but we also present the scan versus MH in order to consolidate that this excess is uh, localized, and you can see it, and this excess is well, uh, well understood. The systematics that you saw before I mean, are all incorporated in uh, that will describe the shapes in, of the background in the different categories are incorporated in these fits. And we checked that they have good, proper, good coverage properties and they do not induce any bias. So we know that we have control over these nuisance parameters in order, I mean, in, 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 in the context of uh, establishing the uh, presence of a signal. So this part has been deeply studied 
had the separate studies in all the categories and all together in order to be sure that the, the presence of a signal, we were able to see it and that the, the absence of a signal, we were also able to, to see it. And this would have given us a confidence of the correctness of the results. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your detailed explanations, which are somewhat convincing. But if you stay in this slide 23, I mean, this, uh, I, th I think, well, I'm, I'm looking at the, 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 okay, 23. I mean, also, all you say is right. I, I know the details of the, of the analysis more than it may look uh, to some people, but, uh, you know, this, this faith in the, in the likelihood as the perfect tool, it is a perfect tool as far as we know, okay? But if you look at the at the dot in the minimum and the one that is right on the left, so and and and, and you have in mind the the resolution in the mass of what you are, which is the, the Higgs mass from the dimensions, just by going just by going one point to the left, uh, your significance is varying from three sigma to two point six sigma. I, I'm not trying to discredit your result. I'm saying that this is kind of blind face in the in the method and yeah, and, 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 and is and is let me finish please. And and I, I would appreciate some some common sense when these kind of results are are presented. Because, you know, this is like trying to uh, tightly to this that that is right at the three sigma. I I don't I don't say it's not right. I'm saying that it's not fair. But this is just an opinion. Okay, it's my opinion. So the the, the fact that the likely chance that the scan jumps actually. It's very well understood. I mean, we, had, we, done, we did several tests with pseudo experiments. And this is due to the fact that in the vector boson fusion categories, we are using a, a bind fit, including the invariant mass. So when you shift actually some of the events, we also test that the data distribution, some of the events shift from one mean to another. And we can actually tie it, each of these shifts to one or more events moving in one or more beams. And as you can see in the, in the region, I mean, we're not actually quoting the minimum, we are quoting the some value around here. Um, we are in a, in a region where the, the minimum is pretty stable and this is where the, the, the results I mean, is coming from and where we, why we have so confidence on the correctness of the result. Okay, thank you to both. I, I think Pablo seems uh, to not be following up. So I think let's move to the other questions and maybe later we can go back to this if you want to keep on discussing. Isabel? Uh, hello, Andrea. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, this question is concerning the, the MH. In all your plot, you have uh, this MH 125.38. I guess is precisely the point where the minimum of the likelihood is or, or yeah is the result is it the result of this analysis where the maximum likelihood best fit uh, or where oh. you have the maximum or is it an input uh, to the Monte Carlo you don't use Monte Carlo uh, no you just rely on Monte Carlo for the BBF which is the mass of the Higgs in that uh, Monte Carlo. Is it the result dependent on the input value there? So the, the choice of the mass of the Higgs boson where to quote the results depends on the in recent measurements from the CMS collaboration on the Higgs boson mass. And this was done using the diphoton and the ZZ to four lepton decay channels that you can see here on uh, slide 31, including both the run one uh, measure and the uh, early run two measurements. And the outcome was uh, quite precise. So we had a quite good estimation of the dimension mass, uh, of the Higgs mass. So this has, has been taken as an external input and the, we decide to quote the results at the value that CMS measure, measured in in, uh, in run one and run two, which is also the, the best value of it. Uh, the best measurement of the mass in, uh, at the moment. So, uh, 
I forgot. <laughs> but then it happens to be the, the, the maximum significance also happen at this value? No, the, the, the maximum of the significance is actually slightly below. Uh -huh. uh, I don't, uh, don't I, if I remember correctly, it's around, it's at uh, 125.2, but uh, don't, uh, I may not uh, recall it correctly. I mean, don't quote my last digit, but uh, I remember that it was, uh, I mean, you see, I mean, we, we on uh, slide number 22, we are quoting uh, some value 125.4 here, while uh, um, a couple hundred uh, MEV, some hundred MEV less, 125.2, if I remember correctly, we had the maximum significance. And I guess you have some, some uncertainty because of the choice of the, of the mass in your Monte Carlo? No, because that would all only pick the, the best of the significance. This is, uh, I mean, the, if we provide, if we profile also the mass, we just take the, the, the point at maximum significance in uh, also slightly biasing up towards the local p-value and the, um, the best fit mean. So we decided, as was done, in the Atlas CMS combination in round one, do not include the, the mass uh, profiling in, the, in these scans. But mm -hmm. we provide the full scans versus the X boson mass. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question that you had was, was where we had the, um, um, the X uh, mass Monte Carlo signals. We produce them at uh, 120, 120, oh, sorry, 120, 25, and more than 30. And we use the interpolation techniques in order to get the, the signal shapes in all the uh, intermediate points. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. There was another question by Begoña. I think you lowered your hand, but you were going to ask something. No, but n no, not anymore. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I, I realized it was in the slides already. Okay. In that case, I think we can consider starting to wrap up unless there are more questions uh, considering the time and lunch. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't see more questions actually. So I think, um, let's, let's thank Andrea. <clears throat> thank you so much for a very, very clear uh, talk. And um, thank you so much for the discussion uh, with, uh, with us on, on several of the topics. And uh, well, uh, I, I hope uh, in the future we can have you again at the Amadme in person once the situation actually gets back to, to a real normal and not just a new normal, that we can go back to the, to the normal seminars, uh, uh, which are nicer in, in, the, in the room with everybody there. Okay, so thank you so much, Andrea, and thank you so much for everybody for connecting, and uh, see you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you, Maria, for uh, inviting me, and uh, I really hope to, to be able to come to Madrid soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.